Hello, I'm Peter Knight and this is number six in our series of short lectures on geomorphology. The aim of this lecture is to introduce very briefly some basic ideas about temperature in geomorphology. My key point is that temperature is important and that this is partly because the properties of materials vary with temperature. Specifically, I'd like you to think about these two questions. How does temperature influence geomorphic processes and what determines temperature regimes in different environments? Temperature controls the structure of materials, their properties and their effects. For water, for example, when it's cold, it's a solid. When it's warm, it's liquid and it can boil or evaporate and become a gas. In each of those phases or structures, water has different properties, such as its hardness, density or viscosity. And because of those properties, the material, for example water or ice, can have very different effects. We've already encountered the effect of temperature on materials and processes in different geomorphic contexts. Temperature very clearly drives volcanic processes. It drives the buoyancy that creates these cumulus clouds, and it determines whether rock is liquid or solid. Temperature also controls the rate and style of both chemical and physical weathering processes. In all these examples, the nature of the process and the rate of the process depend very much on the temperature of the environment or of the materials involved. We encountered temperature as a control in one of our earlier case studies when we saw that the flow of ice depends partly on the hardness of the ice, which in turn depends largely on temperature, as described here in Glenn's flow law. We also saw that temperature was a key control on the friction that can retard glacier sliding because basal water pressure is partly temperature dependent. The striations, crescentic gouges and other signs of glacial erosion on this bedrock in Greenland tell us that the glacier that used to be here was sliding over the rock and that in turn tells us about its basal thermal regime. Cold based glaciers move differently from warm based ones and so have a different geomorphic signature. Sometimes temperature acts as a direct control on process. In other situations it can be an indirect control affecting things such as soil moisture or vegetation which themselves can influence geomorphology. It's also significant at the largest scales and at the longest time scales, for example in controlling the growth and decay of ice sheets which in turn affect sea level. You can find the effect of temperature in almost any landform or landscape. It's important therefore to understand broadly what controls temperature. Different sources of energy include solar energy, geothermal energy, and energy, and energy generated by the processes themselves. For example, the movement of water, ice, or other materials generates heat from friction that can maintain mechanisms of motion, erosion, or weathering. The distribution of this energy is an important geographical control on geomorphic processes. A geomorphological map of subglacial landforms, for example, would be a very close mirror of a map of basal temperatures. Those of you who will have the delight of a real face-to-face -face lecture from me on this topic will go through this in more detail in class, but for those of you watching this on video only, here's a quick list of some of the factors that control local ambient temperatures in many geomorphological settings. Essentially, these are controls on local climate or microclimate, which in turn has a significant impact on processes and landforms. And we need to remember that it isn't just the absolute temperature that matters. The range of temperature fluctuations and the time scale over which those fluctuations occur is also important. For example, in, in a permafrost environment, it's not simply the low temperature that matters to frost shattering or solid fluxion, but also the range and, even more important, the frequency of fluctuations above and below the critical freezing threshold. These microclimatic variations, or if you like, the geography of energy supply, can have complex effects. For example, whether a hill slope faces towards or away from the sun, its aspect, will have a big impact on the amount of solar energy received, and hence on the absolute temperature and on the range, seasonal variability and diurnal variability of temperature. This will impact moisture availability, vegetation growth, soil characteristics, and hence both the amount of surface runoff and the erodibility of the soil. So opposite sides of a valley might experience very different geomorphic processes and could develop pronounced valley asymmetry as a result of variations in erosion that can be traced back to temperature regimes controlled by aspect. There are lots of examples that you can find in the geomorphic literature to illustrate these ideas. Here's a paper that takes into account the effect of variations in energy conditions along a hill slope in Uganda. And here, slightly more exotic, is a paper that looks at the effect of aspect on mass movements and slope evolution on Mars. So, in conclusion, temperature is an important variable in geomorphology. It drives geomorphic processes and it controls the properties of materials. Temperature is controlled by energy supply and the distribution of energy is at the heart of physical geography.